Okay, let's see. I see nothing. I see nothing. My hat. Got my water. Got my help. Let's go dig the funnest harvest of the year. Good afternoon, beautiful people. All right, today is kind of a fun day. Uh, it's not too hot today, so I'm hoping we can get a lot of this done. Today we get to dig potatoes. I don't know if we're digging up all the potatoes today, but we have a couple beds that are ready that need to come out. So we're gonna get down here, we're gonna dig some potatoes. So I have a row of purple potatoes and a row of, I think this was red potatoes. Uh, the vines are pretty much completely gone out of this bed. There's a few purples that are still above ground, but they're ready. Uh, we're at the time of year where it's a race for the potatoes to finish before the moisture really builds up and rots everything. So I'm gonna set this camera up, put my hat on, and start digging. This one's not working. Ah. Okay, Ooh. that's a little better. Oh. That's a little better. That's and a big one. Not So this potato is nice. So I just stabbed that one, but those are very purple potatoes. Real pretty. Tater. 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 How purple that is. So we got, I don't know, maybe like 20 pounds of purple potatoes. And some of those are beautiful. Like those are, those are quite nice looking purple potatoes. Here, hand me a damaged one. So that's the uh, purple color that's on these. Uh, and they're purple all the way through. This one's a huge one. That one is a huge one. We've got another row in here. Uh, I think it's red potatoes. I think that was what was in this row. We're gonna dig those up. I'm not, I don't have real high hopes for these. I kind of finished this row and then came down maybe, I don't know, five, six feet in the row that had the purples. And they were all, I mean, I don't think there's anything bigger than a half dollar size. So we'll see. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Uh-huh, there's one. Underground Easter egg hunt. There's some. There's one. Here's our haul, almost, I'd say half a wagon load. Most of those, like the good sized potatoes are all the uh, purple. the purple potatoes, which I'm pleasantly surprised about uh, because the plants didn't actually do that good. Don't rub them too much, they need to cure and get a thick skin. And then all of these little red potatoes, those were that basket of sprouted red potatoes that we had forgot about. Those basically have lived their lives here for like four years, three years at least. We plant them, uh, we grow them, we harvest them, we eat about half of them and then forget the rest. And then they just return to the garden. We've got a row of russets. I think we'll walk over there and dig those. And then I'm actually gonna leave the remaining three or four rows of white and yellow potatoes until the vines are a little bit more dead. Get every last little bit we can out of the plant, any tuber growth, 
Uh, we're just about there. I think we'll wait a little bit. Why don't you guys haul the wagon over to the downhill side. So this row, it's hard to see because of all the weeds. Uh, this row, if you remember, these were russets that we had bought and they sprouted. I believe this end and that end, I had our citrus tree and I had set some potatoes in it over the winter. Just, it was a bag that I needed to like feed to the animals and I just set it down, forgot about it. They sprouted, they were all growing in the grow bag with the uh, lemon tree. Uh, well, I pulled the potatoes out and all of the slips had tons and tons of roots on them. And so we were wondering, could you grow a potato like you grow a sweet potato, where you get a potato to sprout, wait till the sprout has its own root system, then you break it off the tuber and then plant it. I wanna see, we'll go dig one that I know for sure was grown off of a slip, and we'll see if it produced tubers or if it needs the potato in order to do that. So, we'll go see that right now. Okay. Look at that squash. Hey, look, squash. Yeah, that one's ready. Hey, bonus harvest. Uh, so that was actually a uh, volunteer that came up on its own. We'll take that in with the potatoes. Mom will be like, wait a minute. One of these things is not like the other. Okay, let's see. I see nothing. I see nothing. See a bunch of weed seeds. That's what I see. Wait, hold on. Here's one. Here's one. Take that to the wagon. Hey, Russet. I don't know. I don't think that worked. I don't think so. Oh. So what I'm seeing is, like, here's, here's what's left of the plant right there. It's all dead. We've needed to come out here for probably two weeks. I'm seeing like one potato per plant. slip, per plant. Oh, two potatoes. Two. Two, they're not very big. Not very big, but they did grow. Two. Oh, they're deep. Oh. Ooh, they're deep. Way deep. Oh yeah. That, so we could have more. Yeah, I gotta redig some of this. They're not ready yet, sister, so don't pick them. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're deep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I missed them. So it does work. They grow it deeper. Yeah, it does work. They just grow really, really deep. And it looks like the deeper you go, they get bigger. I'm digging down so deep, I'm getting below where I actually tilled. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That means there might be some. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they're like the clay they're really potatoes. Deep. Okay. Those are okay sized russets. A little on the small side, but it's about what we grow around here is russets about that sized. So yes, you can do slips like on a sweet potato, but with regular potatoes, it does work. Uh, and I'm not really noticing any difference in yield. Some plants, like the purple potatoes, some plants we got like two giant sized potatoes and some we got like six or eight small ones. Uh, it looks like that those single slips produced like, I don't know, maybe like three potatoes each. So that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that experiment. Today, that's russets, red potatoes, and the purple potatoes are now buried on the bottom. In the words of Buggy, holy moly moly. Holy moly moly. That's a lot of potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. <laughs> so I would say this was the largest russet we grew. Sadly, no foot potatoes, as uh, Brett likes to call the giant ones. Uh, we still have 
all of the red and all of the yellow potatoes to dig. We'll dig those in a couple days. Uh, the red potatoes look like they got a long ways to go, but there's gonna be a lot of loss yeah. because I didn't hill these and this is what potatoes do when you don't hill them and they're quite productive. All of those that have turned green are completely inedible. They're poisonous. Uh, as they build chlorophyll, which is the greenness, uh, they basically become like the plant. You know, the plant is in the nightshade family. You don't eat the plant. It's toxic, just like a tomato plant. Uh, you can eat the tuber as long as it's underground and it's white and, you know, there's no green color to it. It's the chlorophyll that uh, makes them toxic. Solanine. Solanine? Yeah. The way, the way I had read it was once the tuber starts chlorophyll production and turning green, it starts producing the, sol the solanine. Solanine, however you say however it. You say it. Yeah. But it's not a total loss. I can show you. There's one right here I just spotted. This one right here, it might be green, but it's sprouting. So we can use those yeah, as seed right. potatoes. Oh, cool. So it's not a total loss. Yeah, it's pink. Yeah, there's pink yeah, ones there. Yeah, there's pink ones. We we'll should probably throw a handful of dirt on that so that red one doesn't change color. Just throw some dirt on them. All right, while well, we're over here, we're gonna walk over here and look at Brett's garden. Wow. Looks like just about everything you planted is coming up. Those are your turnips? Yeah, turnips. Turnips. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> those will be thin. Brussels sprouts. Oh, cool. Watermelons. Watermelons. Did that skunk get all of your yellow squash? Yep, looks like it. All the looks patty like pans. All the patty pans, yeah. and that was the rest of our patty pan seeds. Then all from here is pumpkins. Pumpkins. Oh, pumpkins. We yeah. can let those crawl out that way. Yeah. And then behind you is more melons. That's a lot of melons. I think these are Wilson sweets. Tigger, I think. No. Right? Those are tigger. Those are tigger melons? Those are all tiggers. Looks Every, like just like about everything you planted came up. All right, let's go sort potatoes. Yes, let's go sort potatoes so we can get out of the heat. There you go. All right, I guess let's just sort. Okay. Break out your handy dandy produce boxes yes. you got. So I just ordered these from Uline. So they are stack and nest. So you pull them out. Here, this, this is one that so you, so it nests. Yeah. Or stacks. Flip it and it stacks up on each other. So we can uh, save some space this way. Yep. I really like these. Stack and nest is an amazing function. Yeah. I really like that. So I was looking for the traditional, like, you know, the black, like, baskety tote, like, mm -hmm. long ones that a lot of produce people use. And I couldn't find those on Uline, but I saw those and I was like, those okay, work. I'm not mad at that. Yep. So I got those that size, and then there's a bigger. Someone booby trapped that one. Big fat ones. So those these will be nice for like all of our squash and yeah. stuff like that, the bigger, bulkier stuff. Right. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. Let's get sorted. Yep. Let's get sorted. Okay. Red. Ooh, squishy. Let's check for squish. Yeah. So we don't want to do them too deep because we do want them to cure a bit. Just doing a like two layers or something. Yeah, deep. Yeah. Really amazed at the size of the purples. That's the biggest red we've got. That's not bad. That's a good size red. <laughs> Bless you. I picked this one. Did you? I know how to get rid of all these potatoes. Boil them, mash them, and stick them in the stew. All right, there's our taters. We have purple, red, and russet. We only have three and a half tub or two and a half tubs of each. I actually put the half tub in the middle because that looks better. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and I'm gonna walk in here every time I come in the barn and go. Oh yeah, look at those sweet, awesome potatoes that we grew. I know. Every year, it's a little bit more, yep. a little bit more. Uh, these are the Eat Immediately. Yep. There's actually some more Eat Immediately out there that we left on the ground mm -hmm. where they were like half good. Okay. And they just look iffy, so we'll, uh, we can swing by there and grab them. Okay. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. We should really get a weight. We should get a weight. Is there a scale out here? No. It's in the house? I'll have to find one. Okay. We'll weigh them later. Yeah. But it's a lot of potatoes. My wager would be we're somewhere in the neighborhood of like 150 pounds right now. Yeah, that sounds about right. Throwing this thing up the ramp into the barn, it's like pretty heavy. That's a lot of potatoes. Okay. 
I would say we probably at least have that again out there with the remaining beds. So we will see. All right, let's go get in the AC. All right. Hair's a mess. All right, whatever. We're just gonna roll with it. All right, Ben has run out to upload the previous video that you guys have most likely already watched, and I'm gonna get started on dinner. So tonight I am making <laughs> delightful hockey pucks, <laughs> which is a term that my family has coined for a dish that I make. It's rice and beef, and usually like some onions and stuff, and some eggs as a binder. And I mix it all together, and I just make up little like hockey puck looking things and I fry them and we were eating them the first time and Ben was like these are delightful and the kids are like they're like hockey pucks <laughs> thus the phrase delightful hockey pucks they are enjoyed they are not hated like you would think a food called a hockey puck would be <laughs> but they all like them so I'm gonna do that um, but I also am going to be making a teeny tiny squash casserole with the one lone yellow squash that I have from the garden and then I think I might cook up some of these potatoes that need to be eaten immediately. So I'm gonna get started, squash casserole and probably the potatoes first so I can get those in the oven and cooking. And then we'll get started on hockey pucks. first and it'll taste better. Smoked out the house. Oops. Sorry. It's gonna be good with it. <laughs> it's alright. So I didn't know you were making delightful hockey pucks for dinner. This is exciting. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't had delightful hockey pucks in a long time. It has been a while. They're See? Hot. Be careful. Looks like a hockey puck. And they are delightful. And also, that squash that we harvested today, you made a tiny squash casserole out of. Good job. That's a that's a way to use a squash. Yeah. So we've we've held off planting our squash until later in the season in hopes maybe we can, you know, avoid the uh, squash beetles. Yeah. Maybe they'll just all starve to death. I don't think it's gonna work. Probably not. I'm and seeing bugs on everything. Yeah, there's bugs everywhere. So, hey, that was one of those things. That old timer was like, ah, you don't plant your squash till the Fourth of July, and it's like, pretty sure the bugs will find other stuff to eat, and they'll just <laughs> they'll just wait. We'll see. All right, let's eat. Guys, were the delightful hockey pucks delightful? Yes. yes. <laughs> what about the squash and the potatoes? The squash is good. Everybody, I keep hearing everybody one by one. Oh, these potatoes are so good. <laughs> they're really creamy. They are. Because right. they're new. Hey, don't break the garlic. Put it away. Yeah, the the. 
purple potatoes are like really buttery. They are very buttery. They're really yeah. good. I haven't had a purple potato in a long time. It's been a while. Pretty good. All right, that's gonna do it for us for today. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.